that's good. Okay, is it working? <laughs> okay, so we were having a lot of bitrate problems. Good morning, good morning, good morning. And I, while I was waiting, I was setting up the palette. Um, so this might be super laggy. Who knows? But good morning. Welcome. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, yeah, I think the internet is just being overwhelmed a little bit. So we'll, we'll just, we'll just, we're just gonna keep going. And if it fails, you know, I shall paint as I normally paint in silence by myself. <laughs> so I've just laid out my paint. Um, I'll show them in a second as I wait to see if this is going to actually let me stream or not. See, it's just frozen on my YouTube page. YouTube thinks it has excellent connection. OBS says it does not. <laughs> Is it gonna work? Oh, I see, okay, so I see it and it's super laggy. I know it's laggy, I apologize. I don't know how to fix it, but we're gonna, we're gonna keep going. Hmm, intriguing. That's the last color to mix. Wipe away all the ones I don't need. Clean up the palette. Pop the palette up here so you guys can see it. Oh, I can't actually see if it's in view. There we go. Um, so I have titanium white, cadmium yellow, yellow ochre, cadmium red, alizarin crimson, burnt umber, raw umber, ivory black, and ultramarine. Um, I'm not gonna bother to keep it. Oh, I just hit the palette cam. Oh, okay. It popped up. It popped up. It popped up. <laughs> Why is it laggy? <laughs> mm, okay. Well, so before I start um, painting, like I don't, you just use these straight out of the palette. I'm gonna mix some auxiliary colors. Um, so I'll pull out some white, I'm um, gonna pull out some cadmium yellow and make a yellow white, which is, oh, that was, ooh, ooh, that was way too much white, or yellow, okay. So the yellow white, I will adjust in a second, but that's the one I usually use for white, because white is very blue. I'm gonna pull some over here, take some of the red and make a peachy pink. Can you see that over in the corner? Okay, wait, I'm gonna do it over here. Let's see if I can get it in shot. Is that in shot? I can't tell. Um, a peachy pink. Just like that. I'm gonna make a lighter version underneath in a second. I'm gonna make this one into just pink. Oh, I should have. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm gonna wipe my palette knife off. I'm gonna pull up this one. Oh, now we got an orange box as well as yellow and red. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> okay, so that's pink, peachy pink. It's a bit like blue because of the sunlight, but you know, you got it. Grab some more white, make this one lighter. These are good um, starter flesh tones. And if you can make your flesh tone combination simple, it makes life simple. Um, I'm gonna legit run out of white in a minute, which should be okay. I don't really need um, pure white. Like I said, I usually use the yellow white as what, that's not very white. I have a lot of paint on this palette right now. Ooh, I don't really wanna, okay, okay. I'm just gonna delicately Merge towards not having any white in the little 
Not that you can see it actually, it's behind my face, oops. Okay, well, that'll be good enough for a start. I try to not overthink the starting mixes just because I know I'm gonna be mixing colors all throughout the thing. So it's like, just get them down, get them okay, and get started. Cadmium yellow though is such an aggressive color. Oopsies. Oh, it went to green for half a second. I think the average number is higher now. So maybe we're evening out and hopefully it'll stop being laggy by the time I actually start painting. Um, what other colors do I want? So I'll take some of the ochre and a little bit of black and make a greenish color that's sympathetic to skin color. Um, and that'll be the dark one and I'll add some more ochre. I added so little black to that, but I'll add some more ochre and make a lighter version. This one's good if I want to darken a color without grabbing like black from the thing because that's going to be, it's going to, I mean, you saw what just happened there with the ochre. It's going to make it super dark really fast. Wipe that off. And then I want ochre and a little bit of red to make a sort of orangey color. This color I really like in skin. Um, and actually, I think it'll be good for the background as well. And then... Um, raw umber with alizarin to make a very warm shadow color. And then black, I'm just gonna leave it on the palette knife. If I get a little bit of umber in there, that's great. And then black with alizarin to make an even better shadow color that's really warm. Because black, if you put black with white, it's very blue, which is... As you can imagine, not the color of a human skin. And then for the veil, I'm gonna take a little bit of the Eliz or the ultramarine and add some white just to get that starter highlight color. That is a very vibrant color. I'm gonna, <laughs> We're running out of white. I'm gonna grab some more black or not some more, just in general black and mix it in and tone that down. I don't know if I like that though. It's kind of kind of a greeny, kind of blech color. Okay, and that's the colors I start with. Actually, no, that's a lie. I'm gonna grab a little more ochre and a little bit more red and make a warmer version of this. Okay, that's what I'm gonna start with. Yes, 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 I do believe that's going to be all the colors I want. Palette, back down. Okay, so this glare you get right here of the light, I don't see that, so sorry. <laughs> um, all right. How is this stream? Is it going to work? When I pull up YouTube again, it shows it as being super laggy. Why, YouTube? Why? Hmm... But hello, I see you too. <laughs> Did it just skip ahead like a ton? <laughs> oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Okay. You know what? Uh, I'm checking the Wi-Fi, or my Wi-Fi. It just went down a bar up there. Okay, there's like literally nothing I can do. I, the only thing I can do is um, research it after. So I'm just going to keep going in pain. Um, so to begin, I'm going to take some filbert. And I'm going to start from the outside and work my way in to her face. Because if I get all these blues and these dark colors fixed, figured out, fixed, figured out, um, it'll be easier to judge exactly what colors her face needs to be. Um, so this painting is done. Oh, okay, wait, hold on. I'm brain thinking. I didn't draw this line in, oops. Um, I'm gonna try to mash these colors, do the shadows. And that's kind of the ochre and red mix that we started with, yeah. I'm just gonna start laying it in. So this is the, Al what did I say, the Alonzo? Alzano, I don't know why I can't say that word right. The Alzano Madonna, um, called so because it was in a monastery in Alzano. That's <laughs> It's just the location. Um, Bellini, uh, Giovanni Bellini, painted a ton of Madonna and Childs when he was alive. Um, he painted in 
He was 86 when he died. Um, and he was a painter most of his life. And so he painted through two periods, the early Renaissance and the Renaissance. So you can imagine his style changed. Also, oil painting was literally invented while he was alive, which I think is really awesome. And so he switched from tempera to oil paints, like in his career. Um, and this one I believe is an oil, it's one of the ones. Okay, that's, okay, I've been using um, some burnt umber. with the uh, ochre and cad red mix. I'm trying to figure out this color. I'm also kind of putting down too much paint all at once. <laughs> um, I was gonna just do it all one color and then add the like burnt umber color on top after, but I'm thinking, I'm thinking not. Can you still see that? Yeah, okay, cool. If that thing would just stop flashing, that would be fantastic. We embrace the difficulties and we carry on. <laughs> um, so coming down here, that actually looks like it's gonna be way too late. So I'm gonna add some burnt umber. Oh, no, that's the raw umber. Bit of the raw umber, bit of the cad red and ochre mix to make it a little bit lighter and opaque. I'm about to get the rounds out right at the beginning. Which usually I try to wait because the uh, filberts are a little bit better to push paint into the canvas itself and get rid of the grain or the ridges of the grain in the first pass. And then well, the rounds are really good for blending. Yeah, this color's kind of more, much more ochre over there. Ooh, I'm gonna branch out and add some of the ochre black mix, which I just decided was a mistake. Okay, taking that pack, we're gonna add some burnt umber again. And some of that cad rad ochre. I'm trying to make it this warm color that's also dark and brown and yellow and green all at the same time because he definitely did layers and definitely um, glazed over it, but you know. I'm doing it in a la prima style, which means I'm just doing one pass, and I won't go back and do another pass. Probably. I, I might. <laughs> we'll see how far I get today. Sometimes if I don't get uh, super far in one day, I'll go and I'll do like the face again the next day. But I decided for this one to go from the outside to the inside, so I probably either will not get to the face today, or I will um, finish the painting. It's kind of only two options there. Um, for this background, I'm making sure, I'm deciding that I'm not adding any white in. Um, so that it always recedes. White has the titanium white. Um, the, the structure of the pigment itself reflects light on like almost a molecular, molecular level. And so um, it really stands out, which is what makes it a great highlight color, but not so great for the shadows. Good morning, Erin. Welcome to the stream. I hope it is not exceedingly laggy to the point of unbearability, but I don't know how to fix it. How are you today? <laughs> I'm just starting in the background. Oh, I like this color. This is a good, uh, like, this highlighty uh, yellow color that he's got going on. I'm gonna bring some of it back over there. Um, not quite sure what it is. I think it's just ochre and whatever was on my brush. Add some in there. Try to figure this shape out a little bit more. Nope, I'm just gonna go back over here. The background I'm not gonna try to get like extremely accurate. It's the background, it's not super necessary. There is all of a corner. <laughs> thank you, Aaron. I'm glad you're doing great. And I'll thank you for telling me that it is fine. That actually really helps, because I can't really tell. <laughs> On my end, it looks like it's crashing, but, you know. Okay, adding some of the more red color. Okay. 
getting close to the edge. I'm not worried too much about the edge because I'm going to get up close with the blue and then merge them and blend them together so that it creates a nice smooth edge. Really? That's awesome! Using acrylic? Very nice, very nice. How did you get started into doing that? The icons? I'm gonna switch to a round now. And I wanna do, I think the more orange color. I'm gonna to try to add a little bit more of the reddish orange color into the background. So I'm adding that cad red ochre mix with some burnt umber. I'm just gonna even this out. What is going on over here? I don't think I have enough paint. Grab some more. Oh, okay. Who? I cannot read comments and paint at the same time. All right. Put the paint in and then read the comment. What does it say? A Byzantine priest at your local church? That's really cool. I one thing I wish our church did uh like visiting visiting artists or visiting, you know, iconographers, things like that. That's really awesome. Also, straight from a Byzantine, that's when you know it's good. They are the best at iconography. Well, they invented it, so it makes sense. Um, new brush. Where are my medium rounds? I'm gonna add a little bit of black to this mix. And maybe a little bit of this alizarin black and umber mix that I got going on from the standard mix of the beginning. Um, and just add a little bit in and over here. This is almost the color of Jesus' hair. It's probably too dark then. The fourth workshop? So it's been coming back like every year. re-emphasize this. This is like a hanging that Bellini put in the background and on either side of Mary and Jesus there's this lovely Italian landscape but all you can see is this hanging so there's like this crease because he decided to paint in a crease you know just adding little details okay I'm gonna lay in the shadow um, which is gonna be more the alizarin umber and black goes quite dark right back here. Almost gonna be straight black. But adding the lizard is gonna add in a little bit of the warmth and reflect the warmth of the background, this umbery color. And a little bit more black though. It's feeling a little too transparent, you can see. Just a tad too much of the alizarin. Oh, in Houston. Wow, that's awesome. <laughs> that's really cool. <laughs> I love that also like, you're bringing your daughters in to it. That's so good. Gotta foster that love of painting when you're young. Having like good teachers tell me that I was good at painting, that really helped me have the confidence to keep going. <laughs> um, I'm just 
painted a little bit too far into her veil. Oops. Okay, and then I'm gonna grab the lighter color brush and just blend this edge a little bit more how like Bellini had it. Um, mm, I want a little bit more cad right on here. And maybe a little bit more burnt umber. Trying to make it a very warm shadow color that's gonna look different from the ochre that I already have up here. Well, that might be a bit too much though. And then grabbing the other brush again. Moving this line up. Nope, I want that to be the other color. <laughs> it does, it does. <laughs> Okay, it just needs a little bit. What have I been doing here? <laughs> okay. Kind of looking at where the, the background's a little bit darker because I went a little light with the umber and I'm trying to find those shapes again and then I'll go back in, add a little bit more umber and then move on to the veil, I think. Blend this in a bit. It's kind of interesting about the background is that it is very mottled. It's not a smooth color at all. It's one of the fun things about doing master copies is that trying to match the brush stroke of the artist while having your own brushstroke style that's just natural to your hand. <laughs> Sometimes it's very challenging. Coming in here. It's a very dark line right around Jesus' face that I'm gonna... I'm gonna skip for now. I'm gonna do that when I get over to his face. Very nice! Oh, that's awesome! Did you originally just work with acrylics or did you pick up acrylics when you did the iconography? Mm, I need a new brush with ochre. I'm gonna mix, take the ochre cad red mix as a base. Mix in some of the colors I was pulling earlier. straight ochre. No, <laughs> you're gr you're great. I love questions. Part of why I was like, I want to do this live. It's because I want to talk to people. <laughs> Ask away. Yeah, everyone has their own style. That's one thing that like starting as like a business and doing art more professionally, I used to stress about having my own style and I was like, it's just how I paint. <laughs> how I paint is most of my style. And it's so interesting how everyone takes it differently and like the mind kind of conceptualizes art and how you're gonna make what you see in your head and use your brush. Um, how it's just, it's different for every person, automatically. We're all so unique. I 
I'm getting confused by all these little dots that he has going on here in the dark. I think that's just like s scan or photo quality <laughs> or dirt on the actual painting. I'm gonna choose to ignore it. Maybe I'll go back. Adding a little bit more light, which will help make the blue of the veil pop a bit more, especially since this is yellow. It's like almost complementary colors. Nice. Acrylics from the start. And then icons later. I've always loved the icon style as well. I've been wanting to take a workshop to learn iconography, but we don't have any... Well, I've met a few artists recently that do iconography that are, you know, within like a hundred miles from me, <laughs> which is better than like having to go to the East Coast or to Texas to get it. But I haven't been able to find a workshop yet. But that is something I've always loved how icons look as well. Now, does the priest work with um, acrylics as well, or does he use egg tempura? Because I've seen both for icons, but more the tempura than acrylic. I imagine both work perfectly well for that style. Oil's a little bit different because of the way it layers and dries the drying time. It's a bit more light up there. When I paint the face on this one, I am gonna... Hmm. Okay, so usually it depends on if I'm doing a la prima or not. This will be a la prima, so I'm gonna try to do it all in one go. Um, if I were not, I would do more layers and, huh, I don't know, kind of start, I, it, it depends, it, it actually, honestly, I kind of go, but I know iconography has like, it's part of the prayer, right, to go from dark to light, um, but this one, I'm gonna just pick the colors that I see, um, and usually I'll start with the shadows and then work to the highlights, but the highlights won't be layered on top of dark. Um, and I am going to move on from the background right now, I think. Let's, mm, no, I want to do a little bit more on that crease. But if I was going to do a layered painting, um, I would leave the highlights for later. Um, and sort of glaze those colors in on top. Um, but the Alla Prima style helps to accurately gauge color and shape um, more accurately on the first go, which is why I'm using it as practice. Um, just to get better at, at doing that straight off from the beginning, you know? It works with acrylic and how... Oh, use holy water to mix the paint? Ooh. That's the other part I really love about icons um, and iconography is that there's so much prayer involved with the actual creation um, and the materials. It's always just, it's drawn, drawn me in. I wish I could do iconography. <laughs> but I also love oil paints. I don't know if I could make the switch back. Because I also, I started in acrylics and then a few years ago, well, more than a few years ago, in high school, I tested out oils for the first time. Because I knew that's what a lot of the, you know, old masters used. Um, and then I just, I fell in love instantly with how this paint blends and, and stays wet for so long. So you can really work a lot into it. Like none of this paint, this whole time, this paint is all wet. Acrylics would be dry. And then you could do it and layer, as you do for an icon, for instance. Mm. 
happens a little bit right here. And then up here. Oh, I just pulled a little bit of that paint up. Okay. I think this needs to go darker when I squint at it. Just grabbing a little bit of whatever that dark mix was that I was using for the shadow. The umber, the alizarin, the black. This edge is much, is very dark because that highlight of the veil really makes it pop. So I'm going to make sure it's dark enough that when I add that in, it's going to really show up against the background. But I think that's good. Alright, on to the veil. And similarly to the face, like I was saying, I'm going to start with the darks, the shadows. It always helps my mind to place those dark values in and then place the light and then work the two together. Um, and I just realized I did not mix a dark veil color. So I'm going to do ultramarine and black down here, which you definitely can still see. Maybe not. And a bit more ultramarine on this side. Which those, I mean, even for me, look exactly the same. Um, but if I'm pulling from this pool, this is the ultramarine and black pool. So load up the brush. And... Actually, this might be too dark. Oh, that is definitely too dark. But it's not too dark for... Oh, I didn't really draw on that other side of the highlight. Which I think is the inside side. Yeah, <laughs> once you commit to one type of paint, it becomes very hard to, to swap to a new one. It's like, well, then what do I do with the old paint? And now I'm spending all this money buying new paints. I totally understand the struggle. This is simultaneously <laughs> too dark and too blue. But I'm going to keep going. Um, I try to keep the mixes I use on the canvas simple. I say after mixing like six colors into that background, but I do try to keep it simple. Um, so I'm just going to start with the black and the blue and not add anything else until I, until I need to. I think I need to add a little bit more black, um, especially as it merges to the shadow. I'm going to want to make it turn. Um, oh, we're going to skip this one. Oh, I just turned it off. No, I turned it off again. Oh, maybe I didn't. Okay, whatever. <laughs> that song is very aggressive and I always forget to take it out. Um, it's called Run. It's kind of a fun song. Um, right around the edge. So if you add darkness right at the edge, or just a darker version of the color, 
It really helps the shape look three-dimensional. Um, so even though this might be, well, you can see with Bellini that he did paint it with like a much darker color. So if you're going from life, you'd have to remember to turn um, around the corner. Um, but you can tell with his that there is a, well, I mean, it's a little bit in the shadow right there, but there is definitely a darker version of the veil as it goes to the shadow shape. And then keeping all of the edges really smooth. Something I'm usually very terrible at, but that is what we practice. Right up to the edge. He does have almost um, like an outline right here where I'm working right now. It's a very abrupt transition. Kind of intrigued how well it works, even though it doesn't, like it doesn't blend as well with right there. It's like the highlight comes right up to the edge of it. Um, you know, inside of a veil is kind of like the shadow color. I'm gonna, it's like it's not blue, it's the umber um, and like a lizard color. It's a definite warmth. Especially right, ooh, I don't know, that's gonna, that's way too red. Okay, we're gonna add some of the burnt umber. Tone that back down. Okay, well, that didn't actually work, okay. Let's just get straight black. Mix that in. There we go. That's the color I want. Right to the edge. I think it might need to go even darker, but I'll do that in a second. Okay, bye, Erin. Good luck. <laughs> Our driving does. I hope she does well. <laughs> Thank you for joining. I'm going to leave a little bit of a gap there so that I can put that yellow in without... Um, Hopefully without mud mudding the color too much. I might need to do that on, on a different day. I'm trying to think, I want more dark. So I'm gonna add straight black. And then go right around the white of this veil. Right around the edge, right around the edge. Okay. And then it needs to go dark right, right next to that white. Add a little bit right there. And then make this go a little bit darker since I have almost straight black on my brush right now. And as I blend it in, it'll make a nice in-between color. Mm. That shape is a little off. I'm going to do it like that, and then when I go back to, to that part of the veil, I'll make sure it looks better, or more accurate, but that's a good place to stop there. I'm going to grab a new brush to do a little bit of that highlighting, because I lost it when I was adding the black in, but at least it's not as bright red. It was very alizarin, um, but bringing it out a little bit more, I'm not sure you can actually tell the difference, but I can in person. Um, a little bit like that. Just a little soft, very warm glow in this shadow. All right, back to the veil at large. I need a 
Hmm. I think I want to add a little bit of this white blue that I made earlier. That's probably going to be too much. I'm trying to make a very vibrant blue that's also dark enough to be the shadow color without being black because that's what's up up there right now. Um, the shadows I did is pretty much just a very, very black ultramarine. That is probably pretty close. So let's look what that, let's see what that looks like. New brush though, brush management always. I will definitely post the progress. <laughs> yeah. These live streams, as long as they record well, which, you know, the first one, I don't know if it's actually going to save at a good quality. Fingers crossed. Okay, this is actually way too late. Um, but I'm going to make them into time lapses, and then I can, I will post them on the Instagram and Facebook, which are both Outpouring of Trust. If you're not followed, go follow. Okay, actually, I don't like this color. I gotta stop using it. Um, it needs to be darker with black. Um, and the live itself will be available um, on the YouTube channel. I'll leave it public um, so that you can watch, especially if you have to leave and come back. You don't have to miss any of it. You can just watch it again. Okay, I'm gonna grab a filbert. This round is not spreading the paint the way that I want it to. The filberts are really good to push paint into the canvas. And you can see right there, like I, it was all scratchy and now it's immediately pretty much um, one flat color. Okay, there's a lighter shape right there that I'm gonna avoid. Coming down here, that shape is going to want to be very light. Have a little bit more of the darker color. Squinting to make sure the value is going to be sufficient. And I think it is. Just feels a little bit too, maybe not too vibrant. One thing I don't like about the filberts is the little crescent shape that they leave when you once you have a lot of paint down, which is why I switched to the rounds. Adding a little bit more black onto the brush. This paint is going on rather thin. Um, I'm trying not to do it very thick so that later as I keep painting, it's um, very important for Alla Prima to do the earlier layers a little bit thinner because um, as you add and adjust the color with the later layers, you don't want to have an abundance of paint to have to push around. It's just going to be a disaster. Um, so I'm keeping it relatively thin, which is making it lighter because you can see the primed linen through it. This background color that I used to prime it, I'm fairly certain it was one of the days that I just used whatever paint was left over on my palette. Um, so it's mostly the burnt and raw umber, but it also has every color kind of mixed in there. <laughs> um, avoiding the whites, but there was white. And then on top, um, I did a quick transfer of the image. So I printed, so this one's printed out on nice photo paper and then I printed one out on just computer paper and then made a transfer with, um, you can actually put oil paint on like tracing paper. I'm gonna grab a little bit, wait, why did I just grab the brown? Hold on. I don't need the brown at all. I just need to keep using this dark color and fill in over here. Okay. <laughs> you can put oil paint on tracing paper, wipe it off really thin, and then flip it over and you've made essentially like a graphite transfer that you, like they used to use um, back in the day for like um, creating copies. 
uh, but it's with oil paint, so it works really well as the um, uh, underneath all the paint because you don't want graphite uh, under your oil. Um, and you could use charcoal, but charcoal um, is kind of messy and it's good if you're just going to draw straight on it, but it's not as good for transferring. Um, so it's a really fast method to get um, either like an image, right, that you're going to work on as like a, a copy or your own um, sketch onto the canvas. Um, I think I might at some point do a video of that, but there are videos on YouTube about how to do uh, a transfer. That's really cool. Literally, it blew my mind when I first saw it work. I was like, you can put oil paint and it transfers and it doesn't like get everywhere. It was very cool. Um, but this way I can get, jump right in to the colors and actually painting on the canvas without having to spend a few hours trying to get the, the shapes right. So it works really well for practicing just like boots on the ground, kind of just going for it. Uh, which is the goal. Um, I think that needs to be darker behind that. And then this shape comes all the way down and is dark. Oh wait! It totally did not. That actually is the highlight. Now that I'm looking at it. Okay, well. <laughs> I'll go over it in a minute. So I'm trying to find all the dark shapes. Um... Brush management is super helpful to not have, um, to keep track essentially of what color is on your brush. So you're not just doing muddy colors. So I'm trying to keep it this dark black and ultramarine color. Um, which I'm pretty much out of. So I'm gonna grab a little bit more ultramarine black. And just go right there. Okay. Oh, there's like a fold. That is darker and I have darker on my brush. Perfect. And then here, adding a little bit more of the lighter ultramarine. Not too much, so that I can keep going back. But I think I'm pretty much done with the black. Oh, there's a little bit over here. Whatever's going on here is very interesting. I don't know why that's purple. <laughs> it might be um, because of the color correction and um, restoration work that was done on this painting. I found another version of the the same painting that I think was either before restoration or before editing. Um, that was much darker and much more yellow. Um, but this one is very, this one I toned down uh, myself because it was like this teal bright color. It was so weird. Um, I think they worked on it because this painting is from the 1400s. Um, Uh, in here. A little bit more dark here. Okay, and then I just need to fill in that one part, and I can go and switch to a lighter brush for the highlights, and then start really blending these together and making it look like fabric. The camera is right is, is right there, that's why I keep looking down. Um, i trying to see if you guys get really bad glare on it. You should do a little bit, but not as bad as sometimes when I paint. It's always hard to judge because from my angle over here, it's fine. <laughs> um, okay, new brush. And I'm gonna get the lighter color that I mixed earlier at the beginning of the day, which is white ultramarine and a little bit of black to make it not so clear blue sky cloudy which I think it's going to need more of it I think it actually wants umber 
but I'm gonna lay down a little bit and then I can do that um, addition with, no, that's way too late. Um, a little bit of the raw umber, which will make it more yellow, which will reflect the colors um, as it's under the varnish. So all varnish is um, a resin coat that protects the painting. This is just the same color almost. It's fine. Um, but all resin uh, yellows over time, uh, which is why so many old paintings look so yellow. Um, so when I'm trying to do a, a master copy of it, I'm trying to keep that in mind. And I kind of like the yellow look. It unifies the painting. Just a little bit. This is like that. Perhaps, perhaps. Okay, I think that's the brightest parts and I can stop using this obnoxiously bright color. Okay, so I'm gonna add, I'm gonna go down to this other one and this is ultramarine and white, but with a lot less white. And let's see how that looks. Yeah, that's a better. Yeah, that still is pretty vibrant. We'll add a little bit of the umber and a little bit of the black. Blend the edge. This wants to be that lighter color but it's in shadow. This is also a bit of a lighter color that I painted over. Going over. This is kind of the stage where I, I'll say this again when I get to the face, I guess, but uh, where I just want to get some paint everywhere. And I'm still thinking about the proper color, the proper shape, but I kind of want to just get paint everywhere. So that then I can go in with the rounds and really soften the edges and adjust the shapes. Um, and it really helps to have paint to be able to move around. That one's darker around it, so I'm gonna go down here first. I wonder if I wanna add a little bit of the raw, or the burnt umber, since that's a warmer color. But I feel like it's just gonna turn green. We'll add it here. Why is this, why is that so purple? I didn't even notice that when I was printing it out, that it's just like this very, very strange color. Um, I'm going back in and mixing in some of this white and then bringing it down. I want, an, I want a sort of intermediate color. And I'm gonna add some of the ultramarine straight back. This color's kind of got a purple cast to it. I don't know why that's um, exactly mixed with. Or it's just the fact that I edited the photo after it was restored and all of that. Um, it's one of the fun things about doing uh, copies. Well, or just like painting in general, is just to, <laughs> to try to figure out what colors make the colors our eyes see. It's one of the things I really enjoy about painting. Alright, I'm swapping to the round. I'm going to swap to the dark round that I had earlier. Um, get a little bit more of the black and the ultramarine. Uh. And now I'm really going to pay attention to the actual shape and put in all these transitions. 
because originally like I painted this entire triangle pretty much the same color, but it's not going to want to be. Um, up here is much lighter than down as it goes around Mary's head. There's a little bit of dark up here. A bit dark and then it's gonna transition into more vibrant colors so I'm gonna move over to here this triangle comes out much farther and then it needs to blend and turn right on the edge getting the last little dots of the background filled in that's lighter don't do that okay more paint and then try to do this shape and up here okay that transition needs to have more light in it but I have dark on my brush, so I'm not gonna bother. Brush management, key. <laughs> okay, uh, that, and then it bulges out. And then comes in. And then I did not get quite all the way up to that line when I was painting it originally. Okay. This is the focus time. <laughs> okay, that I also did not get up to the edge right there. That needs a bit more of the ultramarine. Getting a bit bland. Needs a little bit more of a pop of color. More chroma. And then filling in this edge. All right. This is a bit light. And then it comes into the color, or the color, <laughs> into the light. All right, this entire color is just, shape is just way too light. That was a mistake, okay. <sighs> Wipe that off. Go back to the mid-tone, and now I can add that in. I need to work a little bit more light back in, I think, again. But that was just way, way too vibrant. But while I'm here, soften that edge. Soften this edge. Take a coffee break while I think. All right, this is the like a little bit of a lighter color. The light medium tone brush. I have a little bit more to fill in here before I paint everywhere. Okay, and then it goes much darker as this little bit of fabric turns. But 
I'm still lighter than the background. And then this is lighter and connects up there. Oh. That was lighter, but not light enough. Adding a little bit more of the, the white ultramarine black mix. It's very straight right on the top edge, and then it curves and fades on the bottom edge. For any of you watching the VOD, the stream after, if you think of a question, put it in the comments below and I am going to read through the comments um, every day and um, I'll answer them the next stream. If you're not able to be here live, you can always do that um, at any time, really. Questions about me running a business, being an artist, questions about Catholicism, the faith, really whatever you want. I love to chat. And I'd love to hear from you. Got some not smooth parts, so I'm just delicately bouncing the brush on top and smoothing out any discrepancies. Because when you put the paint down, it's gonna like push the paint on either side. And it creates ridges of color that you don't want. Okay, this shape does not go that high. I'm gonna grab the medium brush because I want it to go darker. No, I'm just gonna wipe off the dark brush. Grab a little bit more dark paint. Making sure you can't see any of the transitions of different brush strokes. Uh, it really helps make form look more like form, if that makes sense. It's like a t one thing I noticed that's like the most frustrating thing about doing um, oil paints a la prima when you can't let it dry and then work a smooth transition in on top is that on like a curved surface, I can put down a brush stroke and it'll be the proper color on one side, but not the other of the same brushstroke. So blending those in really helps create the form um, and smooth that transition of color out much better than even just getting the right color in the brush and putting it up there. It's like a two-step process. <laughs> Did you realize I'm holding like the brushes in view almost? <laughs> yes, this is how many brushes I've used so far. It is just the beginning. I think I want the medium brush and I want a straight ultramarine. Yeah, Get a little pop of chroma. That's sort of its medium color. It's gonna make it glow. Don't know if you can tell, but it will make it glow. And look much more vibrant than just going from almost black to a light blue. So one thing that our brains kind of just think for us or process for us, I suppose, um, is the vibrancy in shadows. We just look at it and we're like, dark shape, yes. Um, but if you go in and um, go into Photoshop, for instance, an eyedropper, the color, uh, it can get very vibrant. Um, which when I learned that, I was like, okay. Which is why you'll see when I get to the eyes, for instance, um, I'll be adding alizarin, which is very vibrant red, to the dark colors to create that chroma pop. And the same like over here, I did a lot of alizarin in there for the same reason. Okay, wait, this is kind of wants to be the highlight color. This which, which just over here is the same color on the brush was a shadow color, now is the highlight in the shadow. Kind of bringing this shape in and around. This shape wants to be 
a bit longer. And it kind of connects to the back of her head and it's a little bit of a harsh turn, which I feel like I lost when I was painting the background. I'll smooth the edge. I'm going to go darker with the brush and then add some more ultramarine right on again. Okay, this actually it curves. Yeah, it curves. And I lost the curve. Then it also goes darker right in the middle right here as the fabric kind of falls in on itself even as it creates the ridge. And then it goes lighter here. And then this area. Okay, more straight ultramarine with just a little bit of black. I did just put a little bit of the white on the brush to kind of bring out this shadow because it is it is kind of light in here. All right, and then once again, this color is the same color I had up here, and that was way too light up there. I'm running out of ultramarine. <laughs> it's gonna be okay. <laughs> I'm gonna make it work. Try not to pull out more paint, because inevitably, I'm not going to use whatever I put out again. So we'll make do. Okay, I need the darker brush to push this shape back. Darker brush needs some more ultramarine on it. shape isn't dark until lower so I'm going to go back to the medium brush grab some of this this is a little bit of this has some white over here um, in it with the ultramarine and I need to make oh mm -hmm, mm -hmm, not enough white but it's on the brush so we're gonna work with the shades shapes that are darker um and then come up here to where there actually is a lot of white Probably should have a third brush, but this is working out so well, well so far. Okay, pulling this ridge down and this one over, getting that edge aligned with the drawing. Also, actually, it's very dark right there. I'm going to go and add some straight ultramarine. I'm going to need to add more ultramarine to my palette in a minute. Mm-hmm. Right on the edge, soften the edge. Soften this edge. Come in with a darker brush and fix where I put too much white paint on the edge. <laughs> Push that back and soften it up. Okay, that needs to go a bit darker. 
I'm going to use the questionably light medium mix that I didn't like a minute ago, but I think it's going to be good for here. Yeah, mixing in. It tones down the light a bit. But it is light right there. Also creates kind of a different shape than what I have in that first look pass. And then down here. That needs to be lighter. Oopsies. You know what? I'm getting a new brush. Brush management. Very important. Alright, this one will be the exclusively light brush, which needs more ultramarine. And it's gonna drop some light in here. Blend it in. This shape needs to turn right there, going right back to the medium brush. Finding the right color, adding some more ultramarine to make it darker. Right on the edge. Tapping it in because I'm getting a little bit too much paint there, but that's okay. Improvise, adapt, overcome. Um, and then I need to find that transition between the black, or the very dark of the back of this shape right next to it. Get a bit of a softer transition there, and then, is there anywhere else I wanna put this down? I think a little bit right here. And a little bit right there. Just kind of bouncing the color in. Bouncing it in ever so softly. Um, now we go to the light brush. This shape, I pushed it too far. So I'm just going to scumble in a little bit of light. And then here is all these two dark bits. And then it goes light right there. A little note of light that then has to blend in and then it pops up and does light there as well. Blend it in with the background. And then this whole area wants just a nice little dusting of a little bit of white because this part you want to keep the white, I said this already, I think, the whites out of the shadows in the shadows. Well, really just the white out of the shadow, not the shadow out of the light. But um, if you put white in the shadows, it makes them pop a bit too much because of the structure of the pigment of the titanium white. Um, but if this little shadow portion here has a little bit of white, it'll make it look more like it's forward compared to this side that's darker. Um, and then it's just a bit more light in this transition area here. Don't go over a kit with it. I don't know why tilting the head works, but it does. Okay, I need the medium color to bring a bit more of the uh, straight ultramarine mm. right back. Yes and no. Perhaps. Okay. Just scumbling again to get rid of any brush strokes. So that every, so it just looks like a smooth-ish transition. I think I need, no, I'm just gonna keep doing this. I was gonna get a soft brush and uh, actually like smooth the, the different brush strokes together, but I think there's too much paint for that. Um, and if I try doing that now, it'll just become a muddled mess. Uh, but I'll probably do that for the face, and I'll show you how that works. Alright. Okay, 
Okay, and then this, okay, this is actually a bit darker. This shape is not right. Squinting at it to figure it out. This shape also has a little bit the more I look at it, the more the less like even colored it is. Though it looks kind of okay on the camera. Looking at the camera, well, I guess I could just look on my computer as well, because <laughs> I can see the stream. Um, but looking at the camera versus the in life, it's like a, it's like taking a photo of it um, or stepping back. It's really useful to see, kind of like instead of squinting as well, to see how it goes. And if the shapes are accurate and the colors are accurate. Okay, blending. We never really worked over here. A bit there. There. Okay, and then this has a bit darker. I need to get the dark brush to push. Let's push that back there. Oh. Black right on the top. We'll just push that out and blend it in. Okay. I think I'm going to stop playing around with that top section and continue back down over here. Okay, I need the dark because this goes much darker right as it goes into the corner as the one fabric folds and underneath the other. And then the edge of this is darker. So I'm gonna place that now. This will also, besides making it look like it turns, um, if I have to do edits, or if I have to stop for the day and work on the next part, I don't think I will, I think I will get this whole thing done today. Um, something about Bellinis, I, they're a lot easier to do in one day, I noticed. Maybe it's just the way that I cropped it. But anyway, um, having a very simple dark color right on the edge, I can place that color in really close and get a smooth transition between the two objects and not have it look like I painted them on two different days and the paint wasn't wet. Um... So besides making it look more realistic because it's actually turning, it, it does also help with painting. Um, if you saw, oh gosh, I don't even know if you did see, <laughs> probably not, um, the white Mary, where, or the pastel colored Mary, where everything was very, had a lot of white in it, um, her hair, her face, the background, all of it um, was very pastel colored. That one, when I did the first day, I did the face, and I added the little bit of uh, umber right around the edge that you can see in the time lapse. Um, and that was so that when I did the hair the next day, um, I could paint on top of that. And um, while I did the face, I could paint into it so that it looked smooth, even though they were painted on two separate days. So, okay, I decided to just go over that. And we'll start with a medium. Walmart Ultramarine, right in there. This paint got a little, it was so thin it got a little tacky now. So I kind of have to paint over the whole thing again. Oil paint will stay dry for a very long time um, while working. But if it's thin, um, it will paint in like the time it takes to do the whole painting. Parts of it will dry up enough that it's easier to blend into. Um, 
So sometimes I'll use that to my advantage when I want to edit something in the background or on the veil. I'll just move on to the face and then come back. But also, like, practicing uh, finishing an area to completion is very good practice. Um, to know when something is done and good enough or accurate, um, it really helps actually get things done. Because <laughs> you could easily sit here and adjust five forever. But, um, Okay, this is much skinnier. I'm gonna go with the medium blue brush. And I'm gonna cave and add more ultramarine to my palette. Um, ooh, the paints I'm using did not show up in the beginning because of the, there was like lag going on and stuff. Um, so I just set up the palette without being live. Um, but I have a mixture of Gamlin, Windsor and Newton, and Rublev. Um, and I'm transitioning more and more towards Rublev. And, um, yeah, really just Rublev. Um, <laughs> that, their company is really cool. They don't add any, um, anything extra to the paints besides linseed oil and the pigment. Or whatever the, the oil is that they're using. Sometimes they use saffron. Um, and they make it all in-house, and so they know all, like, it's just, it's literally as close to what painters would have used in the beginning, um, than any paint that you can buy on the market now. Because now, since the Industrial Revolution, we have all these different materials that, in theory, are good for putting in paints, but in reality, kind of just degrade the quality of the paint. Um... And also, when you're just mixing... Wait, why did I put that on my brush? I need it lighter right there. Um, <laughs> when I'm trying to, like, inti imi intimidate, imitate the painting style of old artists, for instance, in master copies, or if you're just learning, like, the technique to develop your own style, but in the style of the um, really good painters of the past... Um, using this actually like the same stuff is gonna is gonna actually make it accurate I said actually like three times um but so if you use like lead white this is I know this is something I found out when I started using lead white um which is a semi frustrating oil paint to use because it doesn't act like a normal oil paint especially when you get it from your bluff and they add literally just the lead and the oil it's very stringy and sticky but because of that, you can see exactly where, um, like how artists would have gotten these luscious highlights on foreheads and stuff. It's just, it's that just because it's lead white oil paint. Um, not because they really added any other materials in or anything like that. Um, and so using that for a while, that really made it click that, um, using paints that are closer, you can actually get closer to what other people achieved. Um... Right now I'm not using lead white, I'm using titanium, pretty much simply because I still have the titanium white and I don't want to waste the paint. Um, and even titanium white is kind of different from the other colors. It's really interesting the, the way that paint works out of the tube and how like it's all oil paint but each pool of paint acts different. So on this one like I'm not using very much white at all. And the paint's very silky and smooth, um, which is exactly what I like using. But for instance, in that Madonna I did earlier that I was just talking about, um, that has a lot of pastel colors, everything had a lot of white, and just like moving the paint on the canvas was very, very different from this, which was a good challenge. And it looks so pretty at the end. 
like glowing in the summer breeze rather than kind of, I don't know, lit with studio lights a little bit more, <laughs> which would be like this one. Um, I think I'm going to add a little bit more straight ultramarine. Try to let it pop right here. It's very chromatic right in this corner, and I have not achieved that with the same precision. This one, I would not be surprised if Bellini went back and did a glaze of ultramarine over the top of this to get the chroma up. Because ultramarine when mixed with white is kind of like red mixed with white. It makes it like a different color. It's not just like a vibrant ultramarine. It's more like how red turns to pink. Which is why I'm going back in and adding just straight ultramarine in some spots to punch up the chroma without having to do a glaze, per se. Okay, oh, and I never did this area. Oops. One thing I most likely will not get to today is this little baby Jesus. The one thing I, oh, if you don't know Bellini, um, Giovanni Bellini, who did this painting um, in the 1400s, his Madonna and Childs are also, they're very weird um, when you first look at them. I didn't even bother to draw in, the, <laughs> in those transition lines. Okay, well, um, it's darker here and here and there. And I'm going to use... Mm, okay, am I happy enough with that side? I think so. Mm. Mm. I'm just looking at shapes and color, particularly this line, and figure out why it doesn't look the same. I think it's too fat. Um, and not angled precisely the same way. But Bellini's Madonna and Childs, the baby Jesus always looks so much, he looks so weird. And so the first time when I was looking at his paintings, I was like, Jesus just looks weird. Um, but then I was like, wait, he looks literally like a toddler. Like you're so used to seeing the, you know, like the, the man, little baby man Jesus kind of thing, which is to signify um, the divine Godhead within the man, right? Um that he even as a child is fully God. And so, you know, we'll often depict the baby Jesus as raising his hand in blessing or kind of that thing. Um, but Bellini just embraces the humanity uh, and really showcases it. And then through like Mary's gaze and look, you can tell that it's not like, that it's not just like a normal baby. I guess is that what you could say. Um, it's just really cool. I love like all of his. One of them uh, and the other ones that I had, I did a while ago. Um, which you, I mean, I can't see Jesus any of these because I'm focusing on like painting faces, <laughs> particularly Mary. Um, but he's like crawling away, <laughs> like running away from her hands, but she's just there, like gazing down and being like, "Oh no, stay in shot." Uh, another one, he's like passed out on her lap uh, as a child does and it's just it's just so sweet um and this one he's got kind of a, like a weird open mouth face thing going on <laughs> i love it okay and then this comes out a little bit further with the light and then up and then this curves over And then there's a little bit more light in here. This, oh, I do not have enough light on my paintbrush. Comes out here. Comes over. I'm gonna leave that. This is skinnier. 
right here. This shadow comes out farther. And over here, and I'm gonna have a little bit more straight ultramarine. Oh, which you barely can tell that I added because I had so much paint on my brush. I'm starting to get a lot of paint there. Okay, wait, hold on. This corner is much higher, very much higher. This is also precisely the kind of things that, you know, you can draw out everything perfectly. But the minute the paint goes on top, you lose those drawing shapes and you have to draw again, which is why um, I did tracing. I didn't actually draw it. Um, why that helps. And it doesn't really matter once you get paint on the canvas. Like, you have to figure things out again anyway. Um, yeah, if you've never done... Um, any sort of master copy kind of idea, I highly suggest it. It really helps um, with, like I've said before, learning colors, um, mixing colors, learning shapes, um, and going off an artist who is ready painted instead of a photograph. Um, someone else has figured out how to make life on a 2D canvas. Um, and figure out how they did it by trying it yourself gets you to be better. So when you paint from a photograph, um, or even from life as well, you can kind of apply those same concepts again. I'd say drawing from life is though the best, which is why I'm working on a still life. Um, that trains your eye to just, just, uh, it, it trains your eye in a totally different way than, oh, I just got paint on the palette cam. It trains your eye much better than any photograph can. Because also, photos, I don't know if you've ever seen like the iPhone comparison of um, the iPhone front camera versus, I think it's like an older style camera, like a, I don't know, I don't know camera millimeters. Um, but it like changes the shape of your face as it makes a two-dimensional photograph. It's very, really weird. Um, so painting off life is more accurate. And then when you're looking at a photograph from that, um, which is why like, uh, what are they called? Figure drawing classes are so important. Um, you can apply that then to your two-dimensional photograph. But in lieu of still life class, or sorry, figurative drawing classes, going off painting is, I would say, the next best, me next best thing. I <laughs> so I have no idea how good this dream looks. Let me know if you're watching live. Um, because there's a little box that shows how my, like, the upload looks. And it just went straight from green to straight red. Like, it didn't, it went through. Didn't even bother going orange and yellow. And now it's flashing back and forth between all the colors. Ah! Oh. What did I just... That was not the right color. At all. Oh, it's a little bit lighter. 11 o'clock. Alright, so it's 11. I think I want to move on to her face. I think that... Mm, okay, yeah, whatever I did here is like too wavy. Oh, <laughs> that was way too much light. And that's too much dark. In between, in between the two. It's kind of hard to paint this corner because the edge of the uh, easel was in my way. Okay, this kind of comes out a little bit farther. As does this. <laughs> the oil paint is just glaring the color of the easel. I have no idea what I'm doing down here. But at least the camera picks it up from a different angle without the glare. Thanks, camera. Okay, and then this. A little bit more straight ultramarine. Um, 
and then it curves up. The difficulty is that once I decide to move on, I can't really move back. All right. That feels good. Oh, I feel like her veil doesn't go back far enough into that shadow right on this corner. Oh! <gasps> Scratch the paint off, that's fine. Um, also feels like it goes darker back there than I have done it. All right, I'm gonna, where's that black? Pulling out the background shadow black brush that I still have because brush management. <laughs> I'm just gonna make this a little bit darker. It was not dark enough the first time. Alright. Alright. Now. Oh, I forgot about that this section. Whoopsies. Whoopsies. Alright. So here is dark. And I'm going from the outside to the in because it will help adjust, or <laughs> I just lost the train of thought. Um, having the outside colors will make the focal point, which is her face, um, be much more accurate when I get to it. So instead of, um, no, wait, no, new brush. Um, the thing, parts that are going to be the most detailed that I'm going to spend the most time on are going to be, for instance, her eyes. Um, Mary's eyes are going to be the most crisp and then the other features of the face. Um, so if I put everything else around it, um, since colors are relative uh, and colors will look totally different when they buy different colors, um, this is going to make it uh, just be more accurate and easier to find the correct color the first time instead of doing all the work and then having to go back again um, to adjust color. Getting the outside colors works a bit better. And it's, you know, good warm-up. But I'm going to just completely avoid Jesus on the side. And if I have time at the end, I will do a quick fill-in because that's not the focal point at all. Okay, that's white right there. Um, this is the, uh, what is this? The ochre, red, and burnt umber mix. That's a good lightener for shadow colors rather than just putting straight white in there. It's a bit of a weird color though. I think it needs more cad red and burnt umber. Cad red and burnt umber make a really nice I don't even know what color this really is. It's, just, it's a really nice red. <laughs> I really like it. Um, which is actually not a bad... Mm, no, it is a bad color. <laughs> I was going to say for the little bit of her dress that pops out, but nope. Nope, nope, nope. Not at all. Okay, and then I'm going to grab the blue, the light blue. I think this is just... I don't even know why this is purpley. Okay. Adding in the light. That is... What is going on there? Okay, so it's too blue and too light while simultaneously being too, I don't even know. Okay. I'm just, okay, I'm actually not gonna follow this part super perfectly. I think I'm gonna make it look more like the rest of the video. Oh wait, no, it's also cause it's like this back color. For some reason has a lot of warmth. 
this might be no uh, probably not i was gonna say it might be just time oil paints are always transparent um and so over time they'll increase in transparency um which is why learning what colors and what pigments have good light fastness is the word um over time is really important and you learn how to paint um, so things like alizarin mixed with white are going to fade much quicker than other colors. And even white fades. Um, if you do like a white glaze, that's why a lot of veils um, are completely transparent. This one, maybe not though. This one looks like it stood up the, the test of time pretty, pretty okay. Um, there's some that I've done on other days where the veil is just ghostly. And it's like, okay, well that probably was not so ghostly in the start. When it first was painted, probably with a much more opaque glaze. If you have any questions, throw it in chat if you're here. Or if you're watching the VOD, throw it in the comments and I'll read it. Also, also, if you have not subscribed, hit the subscribe button, like the video. That really helps um, get YouTube to say, oh, this is, she's a good channel. <laughs> um, that's why likes are important. YouTube promotes the video a bit better um, to more people if it has likes and if the channel has subscribers. If you ever wondered how YouTube Analytics works, that's how that works. Um, so like the stream. Leave a comment if you have a question. I am planning on being live every day. Um, whoa, okay, I just shifted that edge a little bit too farther. Um, I'm planning on being live every day. Um, unless I'm not going to... What is going on here? Unless I'm not going to be painting a one of these guys. So I'll either lives, for your information, lives are either going to be painting master copies like this and getting pretty much done in one day, maybe two if I need to. Um, yeah, I'm just making this much more blue. I don't like the purple. I think it looks kind of silly. Um, or I was thinking of doing these saint paintings that I have in my shop um, that are off a photograph of the saint, or, or painting of the saint, actually, some of them are paintings, um, hold on, I'm thinking, plotting and planning, um, I'm gonna add a little, I'm gonna add a little bit of the brown color with the alizarin, this is a shadow, so the alizarin can go there and not fade, um, so I'll be, be doing one of those too. Um, but at my still life, on the other hand, is something that I have to be standing for and moving back and forth, and I'm just much slower at painting that, so I don't think I'll stream that. Um, but pretty much every day. Um, so come back, say hello, hang out, ask questions. Okay. All right. Okay. I think that. Okay. It's a little bit. I need the background color brush, which I think is this one. Um, and this is sort of the background color. And not there, but right here. I'm going to just sm blend the edge so it's not so harsh. There we go. Um, I think that's good. And then I think I'm going to do, okay, I'm going to pop into her, the top part of the dress really quick with a little bit of cadmium red, a little bit of burnt umber. Yeah. Maybe a little bit of ochre to lighten it up and make it a little, just a slight bit orange. 
Especially right on this side, it's a little bit more orangey. Also has like a golden highlight right on the corner. Okay. Mm. There, and then I'm gonna add more of the burnt umber. And that'll be good for the dark. This brush is super tiny. Somebody liked it. Thank you. <laughs> can't tell. I can't tell who did, but you know, it's there. I see it. <laughs> Very much appreciated. Um, this is gonna be my small. Well, no, I want a small brush. Um, okay, maybe that's a good small brush. We're just gonna use a small brush. No, we're not. Wait, that's not the same brush. <laughs> this one's not as pointy. I think it's older. Okay, this is a good brush. Um, uh, it's going to be pretty much black. And it's going to go right there. Edge. And then here. And now we are going towards the face. Finally. Okay, this is just straight up black, which I don't know if I like. I'm going to do, this is the black alizarin and umber mix. Putting that in there, because once again, making shadows warm is really good. And then this needs to be, I'm trying to decide if I want to put the black line on that gold trim. And I think not. I'm going to get another brush, and I'm going to get that gold trim. That is a great use of this the black and ochre color will be kind of like here mixed in with some really dark black but it's very green right there and then I'm gonna need more black and a little bit of cad yellow Yeah, that's a good color right there. It's perhaps a bit light. Add it in there. Just a tad. Can add a little bit more black, it is too light. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of the raw umber. So I'm not going too blue. The raw umber, this sounds like a commercial. I'm gonna just skip this one. Um, that's, mm, that's okay. Okay, new brush. Ooh, this is a risky business. I'm going to run out of brushes before I get to the face, but that's okay. Um, then I'm going to do the highlights. So we'll do, we'll use this very yellow, yellow that I made in the beginning. Oh, you can't see because that's where the light is hitting. It's it's white and cat yellow. And it'll be perfect for it there. Actually, it will not. Uh, it needs to be more yellow, of all things. This is exactly where you start to see... Um, um, what is it called? When colors look different next to other colors. This yellow next to this blue of the veil looks looks white. But on the, down here, it's very, very yellow. Um, which is why practice makes perfect. <laughs> Learning what colors on the pal palette, ah! I just put the brush in the wrong spot. <laughs> Learning what colors in the palette uh, look like on the canvas is part of the journey. Um, it's actually part of the reason why I almost didn't do pa a palette cam. Um, because the color I mixed down here 
not only does it look different because this camera is kind of a little weird um, when I put it on the painting it's gonna look it's gonna look different no matter what it's gonna be blending with the colors that are already on there creating a new color um, but I do think it's really fun to see as the artist mixes paints I do really like when other artists do palette cams so there you have it yeah. Ooh, that was not in the right spot that's okay um, no, that's white. And then I need, wait, I can use, okay, I'm going to use the red brush that I was using on the dress. I'm going to wipe it off a little bit and get a little bit of the lighter, uh, ochre and cad red mix. And finish the dress and then I'll eat. Can <laughs> cannibalize? I will just use this brush. <laughs> Um, I'm trying to decide if I have a good brush color. I do. This one, this brush, I think I used in the background. And it's got a dark, because this needs to go a little bit darker. Add a little bit more depth. And then I'm going to go with the white, or not the white, the yellow. And I am going to add in these little bits of gold. I think it'll look really, really nice. I think it's technically... No, I actually have no idea what it is. I was going to say it could be the veil. Um, but that's not really the right spot. Alright, because I need... I need I need this red brush because I need an orange. So I'm going to take some cad yellow. But a cad red. Mix it with the umbery color. That That's not the color I want, though. Mm, maybe it is a little bit. I'm going to add it, oh, it needs to be much more uh, burnt umbery. A darker, more subdued mix. It's very bright. It's because I'm seeing these like very vibrant notes in the gold, which is exactly, ooh, that's a bit thick, exactly what gold is. It's a ton of different colors mixed together to create a vibrancy. And it's more texture rather than color. All right, my elbow kind of hurts. Stretch, 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 stretch. Getting a darker mix using some of those same colors. Here and then here, right onto that transition of darkness, adding a little bit in here. This is also why I didn't bother going all the way to the edges the first time I put that paint down, because I knew I wanted to mix in a few different colors. It's a little easy to do that with less paint there. Okay, that's where I messed up the brush stroke. Mm, that's fine. <laughs> All right, I need the black, and it is almost black right on this edge. This black has a lizard in it, so it's warm. And I'm thinking it's too warm for this area. But I'm gonna leave it. And what do I want? So it's kind of here. This is the same colors. I'm going to add this ochre black mix to make it more yellowy, greeny. Add a little bit of cad yellow from over here. Yeah, that's better, I guess. Hmm. Okay. Now I think I'm just gonna blend. This song just played. <laughs> I'll let it go, whatever, it's fine. 
It's a bit of a weird one. It sounds like the beginning of like a, not a Ford commercial, that was a different song. Um, like, what am I envisioning? Like a Verizon commercial or something? I don't even know, man. Alright, I'm adding more cad yellow there. <laughs> Start, started focusing halfway through that sentence. Oh, is this what is this? I don't actually I have no idea what song this is. Um It wants to be more orange. I'm gonna add some cad red. Oh, that's a lot of cad red. Can you can you kinda see? Oh, now this brush is not... Okay, that's fine. Brush management has failed. You saw it live here. Oh, see, no, that's too pale. Okay, what do I want to do? I actually want to... Okay, let's grab the palette knife out, and let's make, actually, cadmium, cadmium orange, which is simply cadmium red plus cadmium yellow. Um, if you buy cadmium orange, this is what you get out of the tube, so... You can also just easily save money and just mix it yourself. Fun facts. Okay. Do I really want that color, though? I feel like it's... I think it needs black. I'm gonna take... Oh, I got... Oh, gosh, I'm just leaving all this orange in the black. Um, mixing black in... Yeah! Okay, let's go with that. Sometimes it's easier just to mix with a- I need a new brush. Oh, I need to not take a new brush. Um, let's use the, the long boy. That's a very long brush. Um, can't really see that. This is like a- it's like a warm green. <laughs> just isn't really a color. Okay, that goes too far. But I want to try placing a little bit of this in and seeing what it looks like. I think this is the that bridge of a color that I needed. High chroma, but not like the most vibrant of colors. A little bit of light on this side. Okay, that is just messing me up because that is not the right shape at all. This one is the black. I'm gonna need no more black in a minute. Oh no. Okay. This shape comes all the way out to here. And then it has black right on this edge. Oh, that was a little bit, that's too bad. That's okay, that's, well, that's fine. That's why I'm adding it now instead of at the end. Cause I can work in towards it with the face color in a minute. And then it needs some darkness over here and here. My nose is itchy. And here. And I love gold. Gold is the best. <laughs> gold is, it is actually kind of fun to paint. But gold fabric. Gold fabric, you know. I don't really know what's going on here. Okay, this is, this is, this is not supposed to be like that. Grabbing the, whatever this mix was, color, grab some cadmium yellow. Get really a vibrant color. And this is going to be the highlight color for, mm, it's a bit more yellow. Why a little bit of white? Okay, that really did nothing. Which is exactly what I wanted it to do. All right. I'm gonna just try to delete all of the brush stroke abrupt changes 
and sort of make it softer overall. Okay, and grab the dark brush because this is way too light. Okay. It's too light in this corner. Agreed. Okay, this is not a smooth brush stroke, so I'm gonna have to ruin it a little bit to get it back. Um, and then I want to go back to my dark veil color. If I can get that brush out. Um, because this is now coming out too far. Oh, oh how did that happen? Just push that back. It is very similar here. There's like a white glow right on the edge as the fabric is sewn on. But I want that to be soft. Um, back to this weird colored brush. Yeah, I'll just add that in like that. Delicate, easier when it's wet. Mm -hmm. I'm starting to get like hiccups. Okay. Squinting, <laughs> squinting heavily. This needs to come over here. And then that transition, which is this color, and needs more black. That was a black that I just pulled. It was like a brown, a darker brown. And then this shape goes like that. Okay, I am gonna commit to go to the face dry now. Then I hope I finish it. Um, what brush? I had a brush that was like this nice brown. Oh, it's this one. Um, getting the dark color. I'm gonna continue that this dark that I was doing earlier here. And it's really warm in there, so I'm going to skip over that area and then come up here where it's super dark again. It kind of comes up here. <laughs> Commit to go, to go to the face. Immediately goes to more of the veil. That's how it just... just that would be. Alright, um, getting... This has the lizard in it. And that'll go right to the edge. Ooh, that's a little bit too much paint on the brush. Come here. Dark. This is a... Oh! Mm, accidentally put my brush over there. Um, it has an edge here. And an edge here. There. Yes, cool, cool, cool. Comes down. Um, I'm gonna get this greener color, which I believe is in that gold edge. I think I'm gonna have to just go back when it's dry again and work on the gold of the veil. Um, but that's a good base so that I can add those highlight notes later. We'll see, we'll see. I might do it a little bit more once it, um, kind of like what I was saying, the, it will dry to some extent, even while I sit here and paint the rest of it. Um, it won't be perfectly dry, but it'll be dry enough that I can get a little more tackiness in and then work in it a little bit more, um, if I want to. Or I can just do it when it's dry. Either way, I believe he probably did it. 
I don't know, probably when it was dry. In some ways, his painting style does remind me of a la prima work. But I know, uh, like, with the creation of oil paints, like, not the creation, the invention of oil paints, which happened when he was alive, um, and, like, halfway through his painting career, um, they loved it particularly because you could get these um, delicate glazes, and that was different from the egg tempura that they were using. Um, yeah, tempura would have been the main paint before. Um, I'm just kind of laying in some colors. I'm going to swap out before I make that too light. Um, and I'm going to grab this, which I think is this background color. Mm. I almost want to do a little bit more in the background, but also like that's a perfectly fine background for what I'm doing. The focal point is her face. So this has, yeah, it's kind of just like a darker version. No, it's not. <laughs> not anymore. Not when I added that much white. Okay, I'm gonna add some black. I'm gonna add some burnt umber to this white. And add it in here. This is pretty close to that darker color here. My window is not open and I just heard the the dump truck, the garbage truck on the opposite side of the house. Where? How? All right, I'm getting too much paint there. I'm gonna need to add a, a edge of white and I'm covering up that edge right now. Um, this is way too black. Right, the black is blue, so I need to add more burnt umber to pull it back to a warmth. Okay, wait, I just also lost the fact that this, it turns around here and that's pure white. It's darker, so go back to my darker brush here. I don't know why I keep saying there. <laughs> Stop. Okay. Um, no, I need a new brush. I need a white brush. A brush for purely white. That's a good size. Not that one. We'll do this one. Um, and by pure white, I mean white plus yellow. Even that looks kind of too blue. Ooh! Oopsies. Why does it keep his brushes a little too fat? I'm angling it and paint from the side of the brush is going down also with the tip. And it's creating these fat, ugly lines. Edging, edging. Gently tapping the white in. Generally keeps it thick enough to really pop, which is something you wouldn't really have to worry about if you were doing multiple layers. But I need this white to not blend with the paint that's already on the canvas. 
And I keep saying canvas, but this is actually linen mounted on a plywood panel. Um, and then there's white there. Um, linen has a thinner grain, a finer grain, which is, it's nice. Uh, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> okay. I just bungled that entire brush stroke. Tis okay, tis okay. Trying to work in some of the highlights that come off this delicate sheer veil and kind of not succeeding. <laughs> I'm gonna add a little bit of orange. Okay. <gasps> that was a bit, a lot of paint right there. Um, it's fine, actually. I'm gonna keep doing it. Cause that shape needed to go up higher anyway. And the orange is kind of nice. And then I think I need to add more black right at the top. This is kind of lost its... the depth. Also, though, this is an okay color to begin right here. Yeah, okay, only okay, okay. <laughs> a little bit there. Um, grab the black brush, the alizarin, the black. Um, come right to the edge, lay in some more. Grab the white brush back, because that does not, it's not a smooth transition there. Also her chin is just totally changed shape. I'll have to fix it when I do the actual skin. Okay. Well, how do I feel about that? Really, it's just this fact that this is so... Um... was a very abrupt transition between the light and the dark of the shadow. I use this song in my YouTube video. Which if you haven't seen, go watch. <laughs> I also have another video coming out on Friday that I'm super excited about. It's about why I uh, am a sacred artist and then the next week it's going to be the, if I get that video edited in time, um, the Friday after this Friday will be, where did that light color even come from? Okay. <laughs> it's going to be the daily incarnation time lapse, um, with commentary and yeah, it'll be fun. It'll be kind of like the first video, um, where I'm talking over it about, um, the different elements of the painting. But it doesn't have, like, uh, like this, where I'm talking about how actually I'm choosing colors and stuff like that. It's, like, actually about the painting. So. Okay. I'm gonna leave that there. Oh, I needed to fix, um, yeah, get a dark blue. And just fix this edge, which got out of control. Okay, now onto the face. So, face colors. We can now start to use the face colors that I started over here. Which you, oh my goodness, you can't see. The light, that one is, this one's cad red and white, and this one's cad red, white, and yellow. And I need a new brush. 
And I'm going to start with this brush and I'm going to do work from the shadows. Which I'm thinking, maybe I don't actually want to work from the shadows. I kind of want to work from the light. Because the, her light, like the cheeks, have a lot of color and I, I like that. Let's just grab some of the peachy pink. That's going to be way too light already, I can tell. Um, okay. I'm going to grab some cad red and mix it in with this peach, or not the peach pink, the, just the cad red and white to make a darker version of that. Add in a little bit of the peachy pink to get some yellow. Grab some yellow from over here. And see that? That's very pink, okay. Um, grab some of the cad orange, which essentially is what this is, plus white. That's much closer, even though it is still very too chromatic, but that's okay. Starting with more chroma um, is usually a little bit, I find it to be much easier. Um, because later, as you're looking at value, um, you're often going to lose chroma as you play with value. Okay, new brush. Keep that to the side as a, um, as a face color. I need to make this kind of in-between color. How do I want to approach it? I think I'm going to do ochre, cad red, and burnt umber, which is this mess of paint right there. I'm just going to make some more. <laughs> ochre, a little bit of cad red. That is way too much cad red. Cad red is so powerful. Um, this is going to be way too yellow. I'm gonna tone it down with, ooh, do I want burnt or bra umber? I grabbed some, uh, and it's gonna make it look more green rather than warm, which is not the direction that I wanna be going in, except for maybe down here. Okay, so wipe a little bit of that off um, and grab some of the burnt umber, put in with the cad red. That looks like it's probably what I want it to be. I just didn't think it was going to be for a number. It's not. It's both. Let's just let's try both. Okay. Mm. Even this. Even though I have all of the other colors in place, uh, it's hard to see exactly what's wrong with the color. I'm going to add a little bit more cad red. I feel like I got a little yellow. I'm gonna add a little bit of raw umber. That is almost the same color. Okay, this is definitely darker. Okay, but for instance, I'm gonna do I'm gonna mix it with the palette knife. It's a little faster to mix. Burnt and raw umber, plus a little bit of cad red. And that, of course, is gonna be way too dark. Is it even on? Oh, that's not it. That's all the way down here. Okay, and then I'm gonna add. It's, it's essentially the same thing that's right here. I don't know why. I just felt the need to do another pile. Okay, that's when I add ochre. What if I add this peachy pink instead? Basically adding white. It's very brown. I would say too brown. And not enough color. Okay. I'm gonna take a bit of that and add it again into here. and just start going with it. Um, there's a little bit of white. I'm gonna put that in right now. Okay. Okay, 
together. This is always sort of the risky part of the painting, where everything looks kind of uh, wrong <laughs> until it looks right. Okay, I decided I'm going to add a little bit of the cad white and yellow. Oh, that was not enough. But this is kind of a nice color for up here. Sort of define these shapes. It's not dark enough though. Add a little bit more. Maybe I do want some of this ochre black mix. Okay, that's a very dark part. And then there's this. It's not dark enough. Eyebrow color? Yes. That's a lighter version of this. Okay, yeah, I like this color. I'm just gonna place it kind of everywhere I see it. I've rubbed in some of the white into the paintbrush, so that worked for the eyebrow now. Right on the edge. Okay, back to this other, the skin color brush that I used to test out these ones. That is definitely too, that's not the right color, but that's okay. Add some of the white and yellow. We're approaching peachy pink once more. One thing about faces is that the forehead will be more yellow the cheeks will be more red, and the chin will be a little bit more green. Um, so the fact that this is too pink, is it's going to be okay for the cheeks. Okay, that's going to have to transition in. Okay, and then I want, I think, more yellow, white in the peachy pink. You're just getting like, the glare from the window down there. Okay, that's it. Mm. No, that's okay. Sit up straight. Once again, like the veil, I'm kind of just trying to get the whole thing covered with paint. I am worried about value and color. Okay, and that's like uh, not right at all right there. <laughs> but not overly worried quite yet. Getting a, a good start in. Okay, that definitely is, we have exhausted the use of that light of a color. Um, and I want, well, let's just try the peachy pink color. Uh, with maybe a little bit more yellow. It's feeling a bit pink. It's also going on thin and showing the sort of umber color underneath. More yellow. A lot of paint on this brush. Hmm. 
There's not enough yellow up there. I'm gonna add some just straight yellow. Maybe not. This is not straight yellow, this is this is yellow white, but it's my yellow. Um, this method is a little unconventional, I will admit. Um, adding bits of color everywhere. But for some reason it makes a lot of sense to me. Whatever I have in the brush, just kind of moving it around the canvas. Um, and the face does have a lot of intermediate colors. That was like the ochre. Okay, I'm going to get the ochre green. Ochre and black, which is a green. As perhaps that. Um, so it's helpful to not just put all of one color down in the beginning and paint perhaps like the light shape versus the dark shape. Um, I do genuinely find this a little bit easier. Even though it looks like really weird right now. Oopsies, that has black in it. Oops. I'm going to pull up medium tone. What is actually the shadow of the skin color? once again, and I'm just going to commit to sort of this kind of color a bit, do a little bit here, move it around so it's not so thick. This is definitely going to need white in it, which I haven't added white in here yet on purpose, even if it needs it. Okay, it's going to need a darker line right there. But we'll do that in a minute. Okay. Now I'm going to mix something a little bit in between. I'm going to add some of the yellow white. Grab some of the ochre red mix to make it more chromatic. No, I'm out of screen. Sorry. Ah, it's not. That looked really light on the palette. Okay. But it's better for up here. Here, and there's a dark shadow right there. And here, I'm going to add a bit more red, and I'm grabbing from this pile that I has um, burnt umber in it. Hmm. I'm going to grab the black brush, which is this one, and get the alizarin black mix on it and paint in the eyelash. Oh, that is a lot of paint on this brush. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, definitely need to wipe some of that off. Start to define that. Get the darkest colors in. It goes a little bit darker here. It has like, I don't know if I have enough lizard in here. I think I added some extra black to make it less lizardy because it was too lizardy earlier. Um, and it's still very dark. Okay, that's fine. Okay. Then I want, I'm going to go back to the medium color, add a little bit more white, it's going to 
something good going here. I also pulled that shadow way too low. Starting to mix some of these colors that are on the canvas together. I'm pulling some white into the shadows. Starting to take note of what part of the face has no paint on it yet, and not doing that. <laughs> okay, grabbing the light coloring. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go in. Oh gosh, that has too much yellow. It needs much more pink, and also it has some of the the black ochre mix, which is just not. In, that's just not correct. Um, so those need to go lighter. Mm. That doesn't have any paint. Over here doesn't have any paint. Now that I have a sort of working amount of variety of colors, I'm just trying... Okay, this is actually much less pink. I'm going to not do that right now. This has a little bit more of it. I'm gonna grab some of the light that was the color that I was just complaining about. Um, and put that back on my brush and go down here. Okay, her lips still have no color. That is too light there. I'm gonna grab some of this color. dark right there on that transition it's a bit of a medium it needs a lighter color right there oh not not that light color though okay and then I want where's the red it's this one it has something else on it so I'm just gonna wipe it off and then Grab some alizarin, no, some cad and burnt umber. And do some of the most chromatic parts of her lips. And here, where I lost some of the chroma, when I put that giant blob of darkness there, adding some red there and there. Here and here. Yep. Oh. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, I did not mean to put red there at all. Okay. Focusing. We're going to go back to the lips and do a little bit here and here. And then I'm going to add a little bit of ooh, more of the white and a bit of the peachy pink, which means I need cad yellow. Hmm. Okay, that's very pink. I'm going to leave it. Now I'm going to grab a clean brush. Ah! Um... And I'm going to just gently tap on everything. And I'm creating smoother transitions between all the brush strokes that I have on the palette, or the, palette the canvas. I'm filling in any ridges in the linen that didn't get paint in it yet. And generally just smoothing everything out so I have a clean look at what I have. Now that I don't see any of the underpainting color at all, also, oh, except for that line in her face. Um, I'm 
wipe it off. I'm not paying super close attention uh, and looking over at the the reference while I do this. Oh my gosh, because I'm gonna I know I'm gonna mess up like I just did there. Um, and I'm not trying to make it perfect right now. I'm just trying to smooth everything together. So I have an even thin layer of paint to work into to get the rest of the detail that I want. Oh, and I totally missed her chin. Okay, I gotta add some paint there. That was like the medium skin tone. So in some places this is so thin that I can see the lines that I drew as reference. Like, oh, I keep hitting the palette cam cam. Uh, pretty much there. Kind of lost the shape. And now it's much smoother. Okay. So, I want to start, I think. My brain said eyes, and my hand just said cheek, because the cheek is really off right now. Um, the darker shapes. It would help if I had the eyes done. This is, needs to be a bit of a smoother transition there. Needs a bit more red. It's also just like overall more dark right there. I lost the really deep dark right there. I'll have to add that back in. like lots of notes of red and I lost the entire bottom part of the nose got it like that uh this needs I'm gonna grab some Burnt umber and some tad red with whatever was on my brush and add some warmth under here. 
that continues all the way back here. So there. This shape is so weird. There's a highlight in there that I'm missing. Okay. Some of that shadow, grab some more of the paint. That was all with the same paint, just moving it around. Doing little circles. Keeps the transition smooth. And slowly deposits the paint that I have on the brush onto the canvas. It goes darker there. Don't have a dark enough color in my brush, so I'm not gonna bother. This has some that's gonna need like way warmth. I forgot some of the cad reddish -y color that I had on the palette, and that's too dark. But it's warmer, and I think it needs to not be so white that I have it here. It's almost a pure white color. I think it needs to go darker here. Ooh, that was a drop of paint. Mm-hmm. there, come down here, just gonna blend that white. All right, now I'm gonna go to the eye. Okay, so the eye, I'm gonna grab the white, get distracted. Okay. I don't want the white brush. I just really looked at the eyes and noticed that there's absolutely no, like the whites of the eyes are very dark. So I'm gonna add just a touch of paint. And I'm gonna grab a, one of the smaller brushes that I have, make it into a nice brown, cause her eyes are brown. And start defining these. Eyes have a lot more lines around them. Like you can see the top of the eyelid, the thickness of the eyelid. That was one thing I always missed when I was beginning to paint eyes. have a little bit of a transition to that white that I've kind of lost because I don't have white on the brush so I'm gonna grab the whiter lighter color brush and just bring it right back down And then if I add a little bit of the white, it has, it, okay, hold on, I didn't shape the brush. I want it to be a point. Just drop it in there, drop it in there, and 
there and then there's a really bright transition color right like it, this is such a vibrant color i want to make with the ochre and the cad red and add a little bit of cad yellow one could even say it's just like a lizard though but i think that's gonna do it add a little bit more cad red as it goes closer to the corner same on this side Adding a little cat right to the corner. It's not in there in Bellini's, but I know it'll help make it pop. And then since this is a good color for down here, just pop on down. Add in some color. Ah! Not like that. Okay. Blend that a little bit, grab the whiter brush. So it does that. And that. And then it's really light there. I'm gonna add almost pure white. Since it is such a highlight. And then a little bit of highlight there. And it comes down here. Okay, this is a little thin, so I'm gonna add just a little bit more paint there. This doesn't come out nearly as far. Okay, and then I'm gonna go back to the pure black brush, add straight black. Oh, okay, well, okay, that is not a pure black brush. <laughs> Wipe it off a little bit there. Um, add pure black and continue on the eye. And it is shaking the eye needs to be done correctly. A bit more black. Refresh it after it's been dragged through some paint. Bellini actually painted individual eyelashes, which you don't always see. It looks great. I... Okay, and then I'm gonna get a... Um, I don't really have this color. I'm gonna use this color, I don't really remember what it's for. Oh, I think this was the like inner veil color. It's kind of a browny, lightish color. That'll be perfect to make the ball of the eye, like the actual eye ball, uh, turn as it's in here and not be a flat shape, but to be a shape that actually uh, rounds. I said like the same words like three times in a row. That's fine. Go back to the block brush. Get the eyelashes in. Clean up the parts where the black blended with the paint underneath and is no longer perfectly black. And then get some of the brown on that brush and do a little bit of the eyebrow. That's not enough brown. Uh, the umber, rather. Define that a bit more. This color is not super nice. It's all, it's all, it's all bland. It's all bland. I'm gonna stop using it. Um, I'm gonna get some of the red and ochre on it as a darker color. And just a little bit in here and there.
This is, uh, it's a bit dark. That's why I'm like barely touching the canvas. Could use it back here. Oh, oh, you know where actually it is perfect? Is on the nose. Okay, I lost a little bit of bounce light there. Noses are very strange. And that eyebrows got a little out of control. It's okay. Um, the edge also kind of got lost there. I'm gonna go back to the dark. Another but another benefits of having this background paint be wet is that I can adjust this really easily. Um, and if I was gonna do this on a different day, if I didn't get to it in time, um, that's something that I would have put a little new bit of paint on that before I started painting today. Or, well, again. <clears throat> All right, back on the medium color. I just grabbed like mm, too many colors. Um, but as I blend these different areas, I just want something on my brush that is somewhere near the right color. It doesn't have to be perfectly matching because I'm trying to blend it, the colors on the canvas already. But having something a little close does help get that more accurate right away. Or just, it helps blend it. If you don't have anything on it, you're gonna get all these different weird colors that don't work. Okay, I'm not doing that very well. Um, it needs to be lighter. There we go, because it turns around. A little bit of light there. She looks a little tired. How do I fix that? How do I fix that? One of the things I've learned while I've been be <clears throat> beginning to paint faces, because this is actually a very recent develop, Mint artistically. Um, I think it's also because of this darkness. Is to just be like, okay, why why does this person look old or young or what is going on here that that makes it look tired or whatever? And one of the things is like, a smile has an extra bit of light that reflects because of how the lips purse. Um, and like, if this area is not defined correctly, because there is a shadow there always on everyone's face. Um, it actually needs to go lower. I need a light brush. Um, so things like that. And like this tear duct area reflects light the lightest on the face. It's almost the highlight of the face. More so than the nose, even though the nose sticks out farther. Um, cause this is almost facing the direction of the light source. Up, you know? Okay, I want, um, I don't have a good brush for that. Maybe I'll just make it this brush. Um, something that's much warmer for this cheek, cheek area. I'm going too light and not enough warmth. Uh, it also needs some ochre in that for sure. It's looking a little too pale. So that was the ochre cad red mix that I just pulled over. The ochre and cad red, I find it to be a very nice color for a skin tone base. 
that's then adjusted to to be whatever you need it to be. But it's a good like beginning. Even though it looks really orange. Um needs more. And a bit more. I'm just gonna keep adding. Okay. Yeah. Oh that's much better. Oh that's much much better. Bringing it down, repairing that. I would say it even needs a bit more up here. Blending it into what's already up there. Um, but before I forget, coming back down. I'm gonna cover up all of this white because then it competes too much over here. And right here, this is where it needs to be light to give it a tiny bit of a smile look. Also, that's over too far. over and then it doesn't really have that highlight there I don't know why I put that there and then it has a shadow underneath the crease kind of make it a bit more like that and then this has too many lines and not enough smooth transition I kind of blend in all these bits together okay that has a lot more darkness in it this However, is much too abrupt of a transition. And up here as well. But I also think that's too light, so I think I need to hold off there for a second. Okay. Um, I'm gonna get more of that ochre red mix over here, adding it with white. Um, Oh, that's okay. Um, getting a bit more of the red, I'm gonna add that little bit of highlight right there and there. Um, but then backing off. a bit of a glow, bounce light there, bounce light there, I haven't worked down here yet really at all, a um, bit of a smoother transition between those two areas, there's too much paint on that brush, and now there's none of the right color, <laughs> okay, I'm gonna grab the um, darker skin color and yeah, lay that back in. Um, I'm also gonna, since I have this, I'm gonna make a more reddish version of it. With a little bit of cad red. Um, to warm up this area once more. And this area. Add a bit of those black mixes. And then here we go. Okay, that I, I had a little bit too much of the light color on it. 
and I just messed up that little area. So come back in with black, clean it up. Okay, um, and then wipe some other colors in and blend this transition. And then this actually has some black in it that I totally forgot about. Like that. Okay, it has a little bit more dark on this side than it does in the middle. Right now that this whole shape is very flat. So I'm trying to add in some transitions to give the illusion of a curve, like a cylinder. There you go, there you go. Um, I'm going to go back to the warmer brush that I was using this color on. And start blending in some of these transitions, making them less abrupt. Smooth transitions makes a youthful face. Yeah, I don't know what I was just doing right there. That was a little... You know that we'll do into blending right there. Um, ooh. Blending the nose a bit. The nose has a lot more different angles and transitions than the first A appears. With all the nose, I need to add a little bit more of that darker color on that edge. Um, I'm just going to grab whatever that is. Adding, just adding some chroma um, to various different spots. Yes, I was doing the nose and then I just got pulled away. Um, this is darker right there. I swear, sometimes I think I see the chat move and then I look over and it's, it hasn't. You can give me an existential crisis. Um, I lost this little shadow right there in that area. Grab a little bit more paint. Um, I need some dark. That is just the black brush. No, I'm just gonna put a little bit more of a darker color on this brush right here and get that eyebrow behind the veil a little bit more defined. Okay, also, this is darker here and then it's lighter right above it. I don't know why I got so dark for that whole area. Kind of opens up right there. I 
Oh, that needs a little bit more light right on the on the top. I think I got too much pink too low. So I'm gonna offset with a little bit more of the yellowish. I'm actually gonna grab um, the brush I was using to smooth it out earlier and just kind of pat some of these transitions in. Starting to get a little bit too much paint down and this is gonna help. Um, Remove a little bit of that and blend it where I was struggling to blend it. If I would stop getting paint on my palette cam, that'd be great. That'd be just fantastic. Okay. This is not like that. So, that shadow on her chin is just very strange. I'm gonna grab whatever, oh, that is not the brush color that I thought. Also, I'm leaning back too far. Um, um, actually, no, okay, this was an okay color to use earlier. So I'm gonna go back to down here. No, oh, it's this darker color. It's the two umbers plus Mm, the cad red and mm, oh, the oak, I think. <laughs> I start losing track of what is in the mix. Okay, but I'm gonna pull that up like that. And then start delicately blending it back out. This definitely needs some of the, the, uh, this cat orange. Maybe not that much. It needs more cat red. Missing like the, uh, not that. Grab some more of the cad red. Over here with the like peachy or pink color. Nope. It's because it has too much brown in it. Okay, I'm gonna stop trying to use that for that area and just use it for down here. Or her eye right there has um, too much darkness. No, I'm gonna add. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. What am I imagining? What am I seeing? I need a new brush. I need a color that is like cad orange, but perhaps more red. Add a little bit more chroma right under the eye. More cat red. Okay, I'm gonna add a little bit of burnt umber. <clears throat> Even though it's a brown, it makes the cad red look really nice and darker. Um, pull whatever that is. It needs to go darker, really, for the lips.
I'm going to grab the black brush, which has the lizard in black. And I'm going to ease that out with alizarin and some cad red to make it less black. It's a little too dark. I mean, it still is too dark. But then I'm going to switch back to the brush I was just using that has the really chromatic colors. And I'm going to use that and just blend between the two. bit orange. I'm gonna put a little bit of the lizard in there. Hmm. I don't know how I feel about this. I'm trying to also let my brain think about the cheek situation. Um, but if I have a little bit better look at the lips, I think it'll be a little bit easier. This nose transition. This nose is, like, not dark enough at all. Oh, well, maybe it's not as off. Darker here and here. And I totally messed up the jawline right there. Um, I think I need a new black brush because I kind of messed up the one that I was using. Yeah, I do. I do. I do. Just get a new one. There's plenty of brushes left. Um. Okay, so what is going on here? Wipe off the brush again. That needs to be more warm. Oh, too much paint. Okay. I think that's a bit light right there, but that's okay. This is too dark. Um, I need like a really warm version. gonna be way too brown. I need like a, a very chromatic kind of a lighter color. That's gonna be way too ooh, that's so bright, too bright, too bright, too bright. Um, and then I added a little bit too much yellow there. So I'm just gonna do that. And then pat it in. Okay well for being how dramatically red that was that really padded right out. <laughs> okay add a little bit back in. Grab 
a whiter brush to blend instead of an empty brush. That didn't really do anything. Um, before I go back to the brush to pat, I need to add a little bit more dark in that shadow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> sure. <laughs> That's fine. That's good. That's fine. And then pat it out. Mostly I'm just trying to get rid of all of the brush stroke marks now and smoothing them all together um, and fixing this draw line because our draw is doing something different in mine than it is in the original. Every time I try to bring the shadow down I end up bringing light into the shadow. It's kind of frustrating. I'm gonna add a little bit more of that like <laughs> that and then add a little bit of we're just gonna we're just gonna mix on the painting which is not ideal because i'm gonna get way too much paint but right now i think it's what i need I will either be done in 15 minutes or I'm ending in 15 minutes. Either way, I'm done. Um, I don't know if I'm going to do the little part of Jesus live or not. It won't take me that long. I could do like a little bit of a second day on the face. I kind of want to start a new painting tomorrow. I wasn't planning on doing two days. We shall see, I guess. Oh, I need a bit of a light that comes out a little bit farther. Oh, that is, I'm putting light on there and it's <laughs> not showing up at all. Um, and then there's a little bit of light there. Okay, I started saying it and then I got way too aggressive. Okay, wipe that off. There are still errors, but I think we're done for the day. Oops. This curves. but not that aggressively. Hmm. Yeah, the shape of her chin kind of did change. I'm getting black in there now and it's not um, 
Did I just lose data for a second there? Okay, well, <laughs> it's time. All right. I'm going to call it a day there. Um, thank you for watching. And if you could check if you are subscribed before you go away and just hit that little subscribe notification button, you'll get notified when I go live. I will be live again tomorrow um, at some point. Not at some point, I'm sorry, at 9 in the morning. <laughs> um, and I will either be working on this one and finishing Jesus and maybe doing a second pass on her face because it will be dry tomorrow, or I will start a new painting. That is it. Thank you everyone for watching. Goodbye!